went live. <laughs> hey, well, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Does that does that mean StreamYard? Does that mean you can like record in live time and like do multiple things on it? Yeah. So ba so we're gonna do an advertisement because I hit the live button too soon. But StreamYard, what it does is it allows you to do like live videos and go to Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter. I think you can get it to go to Instagram and be a part of Instagram live. So co you could have content on YouTube that goes to other streaming platforms in real time in the same time. Damn. Okay. It's good to know. Good to know. There you go. So we're on with Andy Vences, uh, pro boxer and social media create content creator. Very helpful yeah. new thing. We got it linked in the description for this video. Andy, how you feeling? Good, good. I'm feeling good. Just, uh, just got to get through the obviously the toughest week is you know a little weight cut, but other than that, uh, feeling good. You know, just ready to uh, to showcase my talent with Angel, and just mentally and physically very prepared this time around. So, what is the contracted weight for this fight? Oh, the contracted weight is only going to be one thirty three. Yeah. That's that's what I was expecting because when I'm looking at your opponent, Christian Mino, he's fought guys like Kenny Sims Jr. He's fought as high as like 140, I believe, 135. It's a much bigger guy, and I didn't really see you potentially fighting him at 30 because, well, that first off, that's a hard weight cut, and this is a smaller level show. And two, this opponent, um, I'm not sure if he could easily get down to 130. I said a whole lot of words to basically say, uh, what do you think of the size of your opponent coming in? Yeah, well, that's what me and Angel talked about. Like, honestly, we know he's fought at 135, 140. Like, he's obviously a, he's fought bigger guys. So I might not be as big as somebody he's already fought. So to be honest, we're expecting him to take a lot of punches and be able to withstand the power. But um, we also made it very clear that he cannot come over 133 that he has to make the 133 weight limit because that's how much of an importance it is for us too because we know he's fought at such a big weight. Um, and, yeah, I mean, he does have knockouts. He does have a lot of wins. So it's obviously we know it's at stake. We're not expecting like an easy fight, but we are expecting my skills to pay the bills and, and get the job done. Um, I think – my precision and accuracy is going to be key in this fight. You know, it's not, it's not, not, he doesn't bring nothing that I haven't seen other than he's a big risk taker. He likes to like go for it. Um, and he doesn't care. So I think that's probably one of his like main things that he does really good is, um, yeah, we're expecting him to be sturdy. We did spar guys. Uh, my last sparring was with a guy, two weight classes that fights at 140 on purpose specifically so that I could get used to like the size. So I think Angel knows exactly what we're dealing with. And I think he really prepared me well for this fight. And uh, one thing I noticed when watching tape on this guy, technically not very solid. Honestly, I don't think anyone would be like, man, this guy's the textbook fighter. Decent body puncher. He doesn't throw in combination, but I'd say his best trait is that he'll throw shots to the body. He'll leave himself exposed, but he really commits to a body attack. Yeah, he likes to throw a lot of left hooks. What well, we saw, a lot of left. He's a hooker. For sure, he's a hooker. Um, doesn't like to really use a jab, but obviously we train for that too. But um, we are expecting him to want to leap in with hooks, catch me on the way going out. So we have been practicing uh, staying low and not getting tall while um, evading his attack. So next question, is Baz going to be with you? Because obviously guys that jump in, there might be a chance of a head clash or something like that. This seems like a oh. fight where you'd need a good cut man because there's always a chance of that happening with this type of opponent. Yeah, no, of course. Baz is actually coming to my mom's, uh, my mom's house this Friday to cut my way here. And, um, yeah, yeah, he'll definitely be there. Um, and, yes, it is a fight where, hey, I mean, I'm hoping I don't, but, yeah, a cut or something like that could happen because he likes to jump in a lot with his head. But well, uh, I say that, too, because there's a lot of young fighters that don't really pay a good cut man, especially at this level. And this is a fight where I think <laughs> a young fighter could lose this fight based off not having a professional cut man. 
Yeah, and you know, Basil, I, I always offer to pay him more, and he just always refuses. You know, I, even to cut my way, I was like, hey, just come over here, I'll pay you. He's like, nah, don't worry about it. But um, yeah, the importance of a cut, man, I feel is uh, really important. I've been cut before in my fight, and because of Basil, um, I wasn't even worried about it. I was super calm, and I just knew I had the right guy in my corner. It was like one less thing to worry about during the fight was being cut and worrying about if they're going to stop it or not. Knowing I had Basil, it was it was unbelievable experience being cut and just knowing like every round he was sending me out ready to go. So I'm just blessed to have him in my corner. Okay, next thing. Um, kind of how does it feel to not have to cut all the way down to 130? You've been at 30 basically your whole pro career. Was it is it nice to not have to get all the way down to that championship limit? No, uh, yeah, of course. Even uh, my last fight, I made 130. The fight before that, 130. And we're talking about fights that I was having a year out of the ring, a year and a half out of the ring. So, I mean, regardless, that just shows the discipline I have. But, of course, not having to make 130, of course, that's a, that's a humongous difference for me. Um, as it is, I am feeling very fatigued, you know, my throat a little dry, i you know, at sometimes I do feel like I have a little sore throat just from, you know, restricting eating and whatnot. So, oh, of course, it makes a huge difference, huge difference. People don't understand, but people go like, oh, three pounds, that's nothing. Yeah, but it's three pounds already where I've lost so much. And then those three pounds are just saving me a lot more stress. That's what it is. Three pounds to you is like 15 pounds to me with the per body go. fat percentage because yeah, it's like you're you so lean it's barely anything off of very little fat whereas most people it's like 15 to 20 pounds is the equivalent of three pounds for you at that point that's exactly what it is yeah, yeah. it's 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 a lot so um talk about your training camp have you been driving down to martinez to work with angel this camp like what's oh. the dynamic been because you don't live you live even further than San Jose um, now. So how how has this camp been structured? So, yeah, it was it was great. You know, I was going to see Angel. Um, first, we had to get in line with, obviously, what days I was going to go out there, which were, you know, the normal days. Um, I believe uh, I was seeing him Monday, Tuesday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, and, yes, I was driving. I was driving two hours. I was training and then driving two hours back. So it was very, um, it did take a toll on me too, you know, all the driving. So throughout the middle of camp, I ended up making my mom's house, the camp house. So she's here in San Jose and she has an ADU, ADU unit in the back of her home. So I was staying in the unit behind her home and that was the camp house. Um, it was saving me a drive. So she was like the middle point. Obviously, I train people here at her, host, her house, too, so it was working out perfectly as far as being able to get in my training, obviously make my money to make ends meet, and just continue to be consistent with Angel. Um, I was seeing Angel Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then one month before the fight, we started working Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. And how is it like being back with Angel? You've had a ton of fights with Angel, probably like your most impressive win against Eric DeLeon. Well, it's not a win. It's a draw against Eric DeLeon. But the one, when I look at your career, the fight that stands out most to me is the DeLeon fight. Uh, how does it feel to be back with Angel, who you spent a good portion of your career with? Um, it feels good. I think, you know, uh, it was a misunderstanding and obviously me assuming things when I parted ways with Angel, but um, I think the time away, it did, it did good for me. Um, I feel time away made me mature and like see a lot more things that Angel was doing for me. And I don't know, I was just able to zoom out and look at the big picture and then just coming back with Angel. It's, it's no arguing with Angel. It's no bickering with Angel. It's not me trying to, you know, argue with him about what I'm going to eat. I think I was more in line as far as I knew what I was signing up for. I knew what it was. So it was a lot of yes, Angel. Okay, Angel, sounds good. Yes, sir. Okay, I'll do this. I'll do that. So um, I think it was very smooth this time around because um, obviously he knows I'm serious about boxing, that I want to do this again. But at the same time, I have to show him that I'm on a different level and 
he's probably one of the best coaches that knows what it takes to physically take my body um, through places I've never been. Uh, he always says it all the time. Yeah, I, I was too comfortable. And to be to be an elite fighter and to be a great fighter, you have to be uncomfortable. Um, and I feel Angel's the, the right person to bring me to those levels. Um, yeah, I was very uncomfortable this training camp from, from driving. Uh, whatever time Angel said we were training, we were training. A lot of the times it wasn't a set time. Like, I didn't know if we were training at 10, at 9. He would tell me, hey, being Martinez at 8 a.m., that would mean I had to leave my house at 6, so I'd be up at 5. So it was just, in a way, I felt like he was messing with me, just always, like, changing it just because whatever I say is going to go. Like, that's the way he is. So uh, we did have a couple times we trained in Dublin. I was very happy because I was, like, 30 minutes closer. Uh, but, yeah, we were sparring in Richmond. That was over two hours my drive. Uh, we were sparring, obviously, in Concord when we started training camp. And it's just been amazing with Angel this time around. I feel like uh, we definitely know each other. But at the same time, we know what needs to be done. And uh, he was able to take my body to places where I haven't been in a while. Um, there was a lot of new things that I was feeling in this camp. Just sore, starting to get sick. It was just one thing after another just because of the uh, physical physical toll he was taking on my body. But I'm a real big believer in hard work. And even though I'm 31 years old, um, there's no way around hard work. You're going to have to work hard. Even if you get older, you're going to have to work hard. You just got to maintain your body and keep working out so that you don't injure yourself. Elephant in the room. Um, I really didn't like the way you looked in the Henry LeBron fight. Um, that was probably the most uncomfortable I've ever seen, uh, you in a fight because that those last couple of rounds were not very pleasant for me, knowing you and your career, uh, basically coming off of that fight. What are you trying to prove to the viewer, the fight fan and yourself after that performance? Oh, I'm just trying to prove that, um, one, obviously I'm not going to give up on myself, but two is that, um, I think it all comes down to the experience as a coach. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the fighter. Like us fighters for the last camp with Henry LeBron, I didn't really have a routine. I didn't have a structure as far as like, hey, this is what we're doing after training. You're doing your strength work. This is how many miles you're running. Hey, you know what? Meet me here. We're running this much. Like I feel like. Us boxers and fighters, especially me, someone who works so hard, I can push myself so hard, but just like anybody, we need someone else to take us to that next level. Like, there's a reason why basketball players have coaches, football players have coaches, and it's because us ourselves can only take ourselves so deep. We need someone else to take us deeper. Uh, a small example is like uh, Angel, for example. Uh, I would go to the gym. Hey, you're shadow boxing. I wanted this. I want you to do this, and I want you to do this. And then I was done with that. And then okay, put the weighted vest on. I'm like, oh, the weighted vest. Yeah, the weighted vest. Put the weight vest on. You're gonna hit the bag. Now we're hitting minutes. It was just. A very structured routine, even the miles. Hey, Andy, I want you to run three miles. I was like, okay. He goes, yeah, but your goal is going to be to break 20 minutes. I was like, what the hell, 20 minutes? He goes, hey, champ, do you want to win or do you want to lose? Like, you can do it. He goes, I already know your mile times. He goes, you can break under 20 easy. He goes, just run your first mile slow, the second faster and get faster. And sure enough, I was getting close to breaking 19 minutes, so – I guess it's just getting the instructions from the coach. Like, hey, you're doing this. Hey, do your ab workout. Like, I don't mind doing it. I'll do it. But it was just having the specific instructions of what to do each day. I think that really matters. Um, you know, Angel even putting me in the ring and hitting my stomach. Um, and just, you know, just just the uncomfortableness and the pain and the push. You, you as a boxer, you know, there's a reason why, like, with Angel, if you look back at my career, even though I lost against Albert Belvinado, 
they're very, very competitive fights to where I feel like I haven't really lost a fight with Angel. And I think that has a lot to do with his uh, preparation. So in this fight, I just want to prove that, you know, experience matters as a coach. You can hold mitts the best you can. You can do all the fancy stuff. But at the end of the day, if you don't have a hard work ethic and you don't have the right coach with you, you're not going to make it far. But I think also what it comes down to is you and you and Angel know how to communicate really well. Angel's a very good coach, but he knows how to communicate with you to get the most out of you. Yeah, and I think we're still working on getting that better because hey, Angel's hard to communicate with, but um, I always get it out of him as far as when he wants to tell me something or not. But I think communication here forward is going to be key between me and him. Um, I did have a weekend in a camp where we were supposed to go sparring, uh, but I really was getting sick. I was having like a fever and I messaged Angel like, hey, like I'm not going sparring. Like, like I'm getting sick. Like I need a rest. And uh, he said I was fine. Rest. And I remember Lukey, I slept 12 hours that day. I took a two hour nap during the day. So my body was just was just uh, burnt out a little bit. So obviously I rested and I got better. But um I don't have no hard feelings telling Angel how I feel. Like, I'm very honest with him. I never lie to him. Like, if I don't feel good, I'll tell him, like, hey, I'm like, I don't feel good. I, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. Like, I can't go. Like, and then obviously he knows that he knows when I'm serious and when I'm not. Um, last night I had a rough night too. I couldn't sleep and whatnot, but I'm going Everybody to. Everybody couldn't. Everybody couldn't. My girlfriend couldn't. Really? I don't know. Yeah, I had a rough night last night. I don't know why. No, I'm, I'm saying a lot of people couldn't. My girlfriend was up all night reading about these UFOs getting shot down. And I'm like, dude, go to bed. I got like a work meeting at 845. Like I got to be on my thing. Um, the involve, Are you in any way training with your guy Remy Korchemny or Victor Conti for this fight? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was seeing uh, Remy Korchemny every Tuesday at Merritt College. I was seeing him every Tuesday. Just uh, two, three weeks before before this weekend, I wasn't. But up in every Tuesday, I was seeing Remy every Tuesday. How vital is someone like Remy to your camp? Because I know that for most of your most best performances, you had a very, very close relationship with Remy. And Remy's, I'd say, one of the most influential people in a lot of fighters' careers that doesn't get much credit. Yeah, no, Remy, Remy's unbelievable. Um, to be honest, the reason why I wasn't seeing Remy before was because of the distance and I was settling in my home and Honestly, my coach at the time wasn't pressing me to go to Remy. Uh, but Angel, right away when I saw Angel, he said, hey, you need to see Remy once a week at least. And obviously, I'll train you the other day. And then obviously, you'll run on your own. But he said mandatory Remy. So I started going and seeing Remy every Tuesday at the beginning. Right when I started seeing Angel, I started seeing Remy every Tuesday. And uh, Remy's an unbelievable person, unbelievable coach. And it doesn't matter who you are. He's going to take you to uncomfortableness. He's going to push you. He's going to hurt you. And very old school mentality. And uh, he's a gem. He's a diamond in the city. Like, if you don't know him, uh, he's unbelievable. That was probably um, it's been some of the best work I've ever done in my life. It's been with Remy. Um, and, yes, I was seeing him for this camp. So I'm very happy about that. I still remember one of the first times I met Remy. I had my backpack, and Remy's like, put your backpack down. And I'm like, Remy, all my lenses are in there. He's like, oh. <laughs> and remember he started yelling at the people on the beach? I love Remy, man. Oh, yeah, he's cool. That was crazy. Remy's cool, bro. So for what does it feel like to fight in the Bay Area? You, you've had – this is, what, your first fight since that Redwood City knockout. It's like a third-round knockout back in the day, Paco card. What does it oh, feel yeah. like to come back to the Bay Area? <laughs> Um, it feels good. You know, it feels good. I feel that um, I feel my career right now, I need some momentum fights. I've never given myself a chance to get momentum as far as when I've had like a loss, like against Venado. It's always like I'm taking the big fights, undefeated guys, undefeated guys. Um, so it feels good having a good, having a fight. Obviously, I know it's not an easy fight, but having a fight in front of my hometown, just being here makes it obviously a lot easier, no time change. So um, as far as it being beneficial for me, it's great. Um, I'm happy to fight back here, and I'm expecting a lot of people. Um, but, yeah, just looking forward to getting the job done, and then hopefully I'll be fighting in June again. I think uh, ring activity caught up to me um, leading up to my last fights, and 
I think that's the main thing I want to do moving on forward is uh, I want to be in the ring as much as possible all the way to the end of my career now. Perfect. Uh, Venado Lopez, he's now a world champion. You had that close fight with him. When you look at where Venado Lopez's career is, what are kind of your thoughts? And do you look at that and say you could be in his position in a few, in a few months, basically? Well, yeah, you know, I know that everyone that I've, I've lost to hasn't lost since I fought him. Um, Albert Bell hasn't lost. Venado's a world champion. Um, and that shows me that, you know, that, that makes me not, I would say, like, not want to walk away from boxing is that I lost to guys that haven't been beaten yet, so why should I quit? Um, I know I haven't had the decision. Seeing Venado be a world champion and where he's at just shows me, like, damn, like, you know, I, I a lot of people thought I won that fight with Angel and we didn't get it. So just being back with Angel moving forward, I, I feel confident. I feel happy. And I'm just ready to work hard, man. I'm just ready to work hard and get an opportunity. Hopefully by the end of this year, we'll get a, a big, big shot and make it happen. What if Venado, I think he's fighting Conlon. Do you think Venado can beat Michael Conlon? That's a good fight. I know Michael Conlon. Is he coming off his knockout? He he's had a couple of stay busy fights, but this is like he fought Miguel Mariaga. Mariaga is a little bit older now, but that's a very good. I actually thought Mariaga was going to fight you at one point. Mariaga is a very good professional fighter, but this is Conlon's next step up fight. You know. Oh, he's fighting Venado. It's already set. He's, he, it's basically rumored, but it's all but set for somewhere in Ireland around St. Patrick's Day. Oh, Venado! Venado's gonna have to stop him or do something big, especially it being in Ireland. Well, I mean, it, I don't think Venado goes into these type like no disrespect to Venado. Oh, I don't think he's going in like, oh no. man, I can't win to w wait no. to win a hard fight. To, like, I think he'll try to stop him. No, well, he even the last fight he went out there blazing like crazy, like he's on fire. Warrington's a very dirty fighter, so that fight was like very weird because Warrington's like the king of the rabbit punch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, finally, let's say everything goes well. Would you entertain like a fight with like a guy like an Oscar Valdez if he were to take like a stay busy fight between like a Navarrete or are you waiting for maybe other opportunities? I guess what I'm saying is, would you go back and fight on top rank or are you looking to seek other opportunities for bigger fights? Yeah, I'm going to seek other opportunities for bigger fights. But all in all, to be honest, I'm going to leave it up to Angel from here forward. Um, I'm going to definitely consult with Angel, see what he thinks about it. If he wants to do it, I'm with it. And if he does it, I don't want to. It's not about me wanting to fight someone or not. It's more about what he thinks is going to be the best the best opportunity and outcome for me. Um, okay. I've learned from my decisions, and I just want to um, I just want to consult my coach who knows what's best for me, and that's how I'm going to do it from here on out. And uh, talk about the role of management in your career currently. Oh, yeah. I'm right now with Emily. I know Emily's not really known in the boxing world. She's not really a manager, really. Well, I mean, um, she's pretty well known in the boxing well, world. She's known, but, I mean, as far as a manager, she hasn't really had any big fighter. Um, I definitely want to be her first. Um, and I gave Emily a chance at being my manager because she doesn't have no one. I feel like sometimes – all it takes is someone to give you an opportunity to prove yourself. For example, like Herb didn't know who I was. Yeah, he gave me a shot, an opportunity, right? And I showed him what kind of fighter I was, and I ended up being one of the best out of all the fucking fighters he had. So I just feel like Emily, like, yeah, she might not be a – she's well-known, but she's not a well-known manager. So I want to give her the shot. And guess what? That might be the best thing I've done and she's done for me. So that's how I feel about it. Let's conclude this the right way. Let's end it with a Herb Stone story. Oh, oh no. I remember uh, well, I'm about to leave the car Martinez right now. And I remember uh, one day uh, Herb needed a ride from San Francisco for the Third Street Boxing Gym. And I told him I'd give him a ride back. Never, never again did he want to ride with me. <laughs> But to explain to people what, what that means. He was holding on to the side of the of the passenger handle like, like, oh, you drive too crazy. Like, like you need to slow down, chap. And I would tell him, hey, Herb, this is how I get around the city. 
and he was just laughing. I feel like he was clenching his ass cheeks the whole time, like pinching them together, like just so nervous. But it was super funny. Every time I drove with Herb, I would have them all uptight in his seat. <laughs> Herb was also the king of getting really nervous before you fighting. Like Herb would be pacing around right before you fought a lot of fights. That was like a thing I always remembered of Herb. Yeah, Herb. Herb was cool though, man. He really knew what he was doing. Um, he definitely knew how to pave the way for me. And like, honestly, looking back, if it wasn't for Herb, like, believe me, I was no standout amateur. So the manager aspect was super important for me. And just looking back at it all, man, I just can't believe that a guy like that was able to impact and change my life to where I'm at where I'm at because of Herb. Like, yeah, I work hard. I do all this, but you need those people in your life to get you ahead. And because of her, it's because of her, I'm here, you know, I always look back at it. And I'm like, yeah, man, like because of that guy, I am where I am and I am who I am. Uh, and it's a trip. It's a trip. How life works. But uh, I feel like he was gone too soon for me. He was gone too soon. I feel it was too soon. It was too fast. Um, the way it all happened, it was too fast. Felt like I met him. Things were happening. We were climbing and then just, man, it's just crazy. Um, just life so unexpected. It's very unexpected. Well, Herb was a good man and he was the best manager I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the most honest manager and the best manager I've ever seen. And as big as a grizzly bear. Yeah, yeah he was big. Yeah, he was the best guy. Super honest. Super honest. Andy, why don't you promote this fight? And we've included a link in the description of the YouTube and Facebook video of this that has a link to this with explaining that they want to use the Tiburon card so they can um, get you some whatever revenue from that. But why don't you explain once again uh, how they can go to your fight at the Cow Palace San Francisco this Saturday. Just sell people on the fight. Oh, yeah, guys. Um, So... You don't know if you're here local in the Bay Area. These fights will not be streamed. They will not be, like, on TV. If you're looking to catch it on TV, you're going to miss out. Um, I do have a direct link for those that want to support me. Um, it's in my Instagram bio. Uh, password code is Tiburon. You guys are going to have a good night of boxing. Professional boxing is back in the Bay Area. And uh, for those that want... And for those that haven't, I do want to just mention to uh, subscribe to my YouTube, man. I started my You're YouTube a good channel. channel too, bro. I yeah, enjoy I it. Like it. I'm working with a guy named Eddie who's doing all my editing and he's uploading my thumbnails. And I feel that was what was taking a lot of time. So I'm really glad I met him and I have a lot of stuff coming to everyone. I know I want to not only share my story, I want to share people that I met in the boxing world, share tips. Um, how I got my six pack, how I got, how I did a lot of things in boxing. And I will release a lot of political aspects about boxing once my career is over with. But until then, uh, just, you know, some tips, education, training videos, shorts, and uh, yeah, Into the Trenches is my YouTube channel. If you can subscribe. And for those that want to see me fight, along with many other barrier boxers, um, it's going to take place this Saturday at the Cow Palace. Use the link in my bio. Use the link right here in the description. You go ahead and get your tickets. Um, I believe doors do open at 4 or 5 p.m. And uh, it's going to be an exciting night. I'm glad I'm the co-main event. and I'm excited. It's great. Um, this is awesome. Glad to see you back, Andy. And you know we had to get you on. I wish you the best. All right, Luki. Thank you so much.